Well, I'm here with another price update. Surprise, surprise. This is going to be update number four of 2023. And unfortunately, 2023 is starting to shape up a lot like 2021. And for those of you who weren't around or don't remember what 2021 had in store for us, it was not such a great year for prices. Essentially what happened at the very beginning of 2021, prices went down. And in February, we saw our lowest prices that we've ever seen on all models. The Model 3, the Model Y, all trims, lowest prices. Then throughout the year, we saw prices creep up month after month after month. In some cases, we had multiple price changes in each of those months. So at the end of the day, 12 total price changes in 2021, and our total impact was up to $10,000. The long range Model Y at its low point in February of 2021 was 48,990. By the end of the year, it was 58,990. And from there in 2022, it had gradual increases until it hit the peak at 65,990, where it stayed for a long time until just this year. Of course, prices went down significantly across the board, including the long range Model Y, but we had a couple of changes and here we are on change number four. So number one was the huge decrease. Number two, number three were increases and now we have yet another increase. Now it's interesting because historically Tesla has been very much about making these changes across the board. But in this case, Tesla seems to be going on this fragmented approach in prices, very stagnant. And I think it's a good representation of demand, real-time planning, real-time adjustments to that demand and having pricing reflecting what the order log looks like. That said, there are some caveats. I will go into those details. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into the details. Now, before we dive into those prices, if you do keep coming back for breaking news just like this and you wanna see more of it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The great news here is the Model 3 has not changed prices. The standard range went down 500 bucks last month and it is still sitting at 43,490. The performance at 53,990, just like it was last month. The interesting thing here is the long range has been an off menu item for quite some time now. With those price decreases, its new price was $49,990. And I bring it up because I have not seen a long range in inventory for quite some time now. And that's the only way you can get a long range Model 3. I went ahead and went on a website that I like to follow when tracking inventory. I'll have a link in the description for your convenience, but it looks at the entire country's inventory. And when I sort this from highest to lowest price, as you can see, there's not a single long range in the entire country in inventory. And I guess that is not necessarily surprising, but Tesla has stopped rolling out long ranges into inventory like they had been doing for some time. So you can't even get a long range right now. Obviously you can't order it, but for some time you could at least find it in inventory. That seems to have all gone away and it most likely has to do with allocating the battery capacity of the long range Model 3 all to the Model Y. Over on the Model Y, no surprise, that's where we have our price changes. We have two trims that did see a $500 increase. The so-called standard range Model Y or the Model Y all wheel drive from Giga Austin went up $500. This trim now starts at $51,490, which is a $500 increase. The long range is still sitting at $54,990, thank goodness. And the performance unfortunately went up $500 to $58,990. And now looking at these trims this year so far on the Model 3, we've only seen a $500 decrease on the standard range, no changes on long range or performance, on the Model Y, standard range has only increased 500 this year, long range 1500 this year, and now the performance 1500 this year. I'm not so surprised to see the performance price go up. And as you well know, at this point, the IRS has changed some rules and is now considering all Tesla Model Ys an SUV, meaning $80,000 MSRP cap. So those of you who were going down to a long range and getting the white and reducing that price went ahead and said, forget it, I'm getting the performance, that's what I wanted anyways. So apparently enough people have done that that it has triggered a price change for the performance. So the so-called standard range and the performance $500 increase. Now there's two camps of thought on these price changes. We have investors on one corner and we have consumers on another corner. 
For investors, this is great news. Tesla is continuing to show their price elasticity is incredible. They're able to make changes to prices and presumably continue to have strong enough demand to support continued increases. Now, of course, they did have a major decrease, but we're starting to see that start to go back up kind of like it started in 2021. On the flip side, we have the consumers and consumers are getting frustrated, irritated even. I heard from a ton of you who were super frustrated about the major price decrease because you had just taken delivery. It's no surprise at the end of the year last year, there were some pretty significant discounts, but even then that was about half of the discount these cars ended up being, especially like a Model Y long range. That $7,500 at the end of the year, did not quite make up the $13,000 it went down just hours later. And on the other hand, we have consumers who want a Tesla that just can't afford it. And every time Tesla increases prices, that's another consumer who cannot afford a Tesla. Now, I do want to clarify, Tesla's not the only EV maker out there. Seems like a um, point that has to continue to be made, but there are some fantastic deals out there outside of Tesla. Obviously, though, Tesla has quite a package to offer compared to what else is out there at a price point that is probably pretty reasonable considering what you get. So with that, it continues to be frustrating for a lot of consumers, myself included watching this as we want to get more people on board with electrification. Right now, consumers see the Tesla charging network and they see the public charging network and they see only one real option in an electric car. And that's why the market has continued to be dominated by Tesla. With that said, which camp are you in? Let me know in the comments. If we look at Tesla's profit margin, net margin as of December of 2022 was 15.45%. Again, that's net profit. That is incredible. In the automotive industry, we are talking single digit profit margins in good years. So having a 15% consecutively double digit net profit at Tesla they are absolutely destroying the norms for the automotive industry. Now, of course, Tesla has a leg up because they can sell direct to consumers. By doing that, they don't have to deal with a dealer network and they can charge prices directly to consumers, cutting out a whole piece of the pie. Tesla obviously leading the pack at $9,574 per car. The second place, General Motors, $2,150 almost five times the profitability as General Motors. And General Motors, they know what they're doing. This is unbelievable. As you look at this list and continue tracking it down, you can see big names here who aren't really making a ton of money. Over on the China side, there are completely different economics at hand and the government is involved. So there's a lot of different challenges over there. So probably not a very good comparison to any of the US automotive industry, at least at this point. But again, it just comes back to Tesla's ability to continue to command the electric automotive market. And as this market continues to explode, Tesla is going to continue to be successful. Although this is not great news, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.